Oh, what's up everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and today we gotta talk about this Joe Budden everyday struggle situation. Now, if you don't know, apparently Joe Budden has left everyday struggle. It was confirmed in his tweets, and he actually said, hey, they're making it seem like I'm on parental leave because of my son. Nah, bruh, I'm out of this thing. And first, I gotta say, this is messed up, man, because I actually turned on everyday struggle when I was working yesterday, and I noticed Joe wasn't there, it was who kid. But I assume that it must have been a Friday episode that I missed because a lot of times I don't watch on Fridays. And now I wake up to this news and I'm like, yo, are they trying to end this, my nigga Joe? Why do these corporations feel like they can keep getting rid of cast members that we know and love without saying anything? And not only that, but replacing some of the darkest niggas we know with some of the lightest motherfuckers we know. And the other way around, because technically Joe Budden's situation is a reverse and viv. If, of course, it actually ended up being somebody like Who Kid. And don't try to twist that as if I got anything against dark skinned people. Shit, I'm in the middle. Y'all always forget about us. All I'm saying is if they make these replacements, let people know and make it make sense. But I digress. I'm getting way off topic. Will the show work without Joe Budden? People don't realize that Joe Budden has a very unique personality. There are only a few guys like that in the game. You know, you're talking about Joe Budden. You're talking about Charlemagne. There are some other ones floating out there, but they, they not, you know, they're not clicking right now. Nori is probably similar in that vein. These people are not easily replaceable. Yeah, you got academics left and you can tell that he's developed some of those traits as far as the transparency and truth and just principles that, that they move by those set of guys, but at the same time, I can get academics on academics channel. So you basically don't have to take all the work that you put in this year, take the attention that you now have and rebrand to something that hopefully works with whoever the new people are. If you look at Complex's other shows, they don't really get that kind of engagement. It's not really just the format. It is the personalities. As a matter of fact, Skip Bayless, right? Stephen A. Smith, the personalities that they actually put in those places that help make the show survive and thrive. And you can see when Skip Bayless left the first take show, it's arguable that Undisputed, in my opinion, is actually way better than First Take, uh, especially when you add Shannon Sharp. Damn, did Skip Bayless and Viv Stephen A. Smith? Yo, in all seriousness though, one of the main reasons I actually watched was for Joe's insights on the industries. Without that, a lot of it can be pretty gossipy, which, you know, I just don't have time for that. And then the other stuff, I could just go to Academics page because I want to get his stuff and I can go straight to it without all this elongated topics that don't necessarily matter. And in terms of surviving, you're talking about two guys that are pretty damn okay on their own. Yeah, the corporation might think they could just plug in different people because they don't realize the value. But at the end of the day, Academics tends to move with a lot of integrity when it comes to content so if he doesn't feel that next season is all right then he'll probably bounce himself because he's good with his own platform so the amount of fuck shit that the corporation is going to be able to make joe or academics do is pretty damn limited man but hey once again complex is a corporation they're owned by verizon and hearst this isn't necessarily of the culture they have to find people to plug in and hopefully get it right when it comes to the culture but the other shows they don't have that engagement and hey there's probably a chance that joe could come back who knows if the contract negotiations are officially over over because at the end of the day if you look at somebody like 50 cent who was like yo i'm taking my show power to another channel they finally cut that check right and then next thing you know, things are right. Now, I don't know. This ain't one of those scripted shows. So it's not storyline driven. It is all personality driven. And I don't care how many different personalities you bring and try to mesh together. It's hard to get the chemistry just right where it's something that's special. Like The Breakfast Club. Like Drink Champs. Like Everyday Struggle. There's only a few of them. There's a lot of ones that have you know, people in the know in the industry and are well respected in what they do. But when it comes to getting on camera and personality shining, talking about shit that people give a fuck about, that's only a few channels. I'm just gonna watch. I really did this video also because I wanted to see y'all's opinions on this. So let me know what y'all are thinking in the comments. And oh yeah, uh, while I'm on this, and because I'm never gonna do a full video on it, but people have asked for me to do a video on it for a good minute now. Was everyday struggle a good move for academics to make? Because a lot of people say, yo man, technically they're his competition, they're really trying to use him and then get rid of academics page. Well, if you see he was smart enough not to get rid of his own platform, he, matter of fact, he you know uses it as a vicious cycle when you got topics on the show and then he brings it back to his page as well. But on top of that, I actually think it was a great career move, not just because of the obvious success that has happened now, but really because of the fact that 
Anytime you can learn some shit on somebody else's dime, it's a great ass career move. Think about it. He's getting paid and he's in all these production meetings and just seeing all this behind the scenes stuff and being a part of it in a way that would have cost him a lot of money to do himself. And then you have this credibility that's given on that kind of platform because a lot of times, you know, in the industry, people are a little slow and they don't understand a nigga like academics value without him being associated with some kind of comp company or corporation. There's a lot of nice things he gets from it. But once again, to me, the biggest thing is really just that knowledge because now he can flip that and use it for a lot of things he's doing in the future. And if he wants to start doing his own shows, he can more easily find you know people to put money behind it because he can say, yo, I got this knowledge. I was on a successful show. I seen behind the scenes, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, moral of the story is everyday struggle. Please don't envy my nigga Joe. And who knows? They could just be trolling because today trolling and PR stunts are the same things. People want attention and they just figure out ways to uh, you know start conversation. We'll see. Other than that, if you like this video, go ahead, hit that like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you ain't subscribed, bruh, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.